Section 6.5, Limits of Indeterminate Forms, L'Hopital's Rule. The objectives for today's lesson are, 1. Know the list of indeterminate forms. So we saw these yesterday, but we want to uh, go back and review them. And 2. Rewrite a function whose limit yields an indeterminate form other than 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. Why would we want to do that? Because as we saw in the first day's lesson, although we have these seven indeterminate forms, only the first two are the ones for which we can apply L'Hopital's rule. And in fact, yesterday's lesson dealt with what would you do if you had one of these three indeterminate forms? You would have to use a special procedure where you assume the limit exists and is equal to y and take the natural log of both sides of the equation and then proceed from there. Today, we want to consider what happens if you try direct substitution and you get one of these two indeterminate forms. So yesterday, we looked at what happens if you get one of the th three indeterminate forms on the right side. We need to employ a special procedure, assume the limit exists is equal to y, and take the natural log of both sides. The very first day, we looked at problems where we get one of these two indeterminate forms. You can use L'Hopital's rule right away if you get either 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. And today we're going to look at what happens if you get one of the two in the middle. What you have to do is this. Today, if you get infinity minus infinity or 0 times infinity when you try direct substitution, you know you have an indeterminate form, so that means you don't know the answer to the problem. It's indeterminate, so you're not sure what the answer is. So you have to do something to find the answer. And the way you're going to deal with problems that give you one of these two indeterminate forms is objective two. Rewrite a function whose limit yields an indeterminate form other than uh, zero over zero or infinity over infinity. Uh, to be more precise, our objective is rewrite a function whose limit yields an indeterminate form that's one of these two. Because if you get one of the three on the right, you wouldn't even do this procedure. You would do what we learned yesterday, where you assume the limit exists and is equal to y and take the natural log of both sides. So really, rewrite a function whose limit yields one of these two indeterminate forms. So we're going to look at an example for that today. We're going to look at an example where when we try direct substitution, we get infinity minus infinity. So we're going to have to rewrite the function until we get one of these two indeterminate forms so we can use L'Hopital's rule. So let's look at our example. So here we have number 29. We have the limit of, here's our function, 1 over x minus 1 over e to the x minus 1, and we want to take the limit of this function as x approaches 0 from the right side of 0. As x approaches 0 from the right side of 0. So here's what you need to do for the first step. You need to think about what's going on with 1 over x and what's going on with 1 over uh, e to the x minus 1 as x approaches 0 from the right side, meaning the x values are getting closer to 0, but from the right side of 0, meaning greater than 0, which means our x values are going to be very small but positive. So what happens when you take 1 and divide by a very small positive number. For example, a very small positive number would be something like 0 0.1. That would be 10. Or if you divide 1 by 0 0.01, which is even smaller, you get 100. Or if you divide 1 by 0 0.001, you get 1,000. And if you divide 1 by 0 0.0001, you get 10,000. So what happens is this. As x approaches 0 from the right side of 0, 1 over x will approach infinity. You can see that the values of the quotient increase without bound. Now let's consider what happens with 1 over e to the x minus 1. So 
So what happens with 1 over e to the x minus 1? Again, x is approaching 0 from the right side of 0, meaning x values are greater than 0 but close to 0. So they're very small positive numbers. So e to the 0 is 1. We know e to the 0 is 1, but x is actually going to be a little bit greater than 0, so you'll have e to the x be a little bit greater than 1. So if you have a little bit greater than 1 and you're subtracting 1 from it, you'll get a very small positive number. And you're going to divide 1, which is in the numerator of the second fraction, by very small positive numbers. And when you do that, as the positive numbers in the denominator get smaller and smaller, the quotient will get larger and larger, as we just saw for the first fraction. So the second fraction will also approach infinity. And we know from the original problem that there is a minus sign between the two fractions. We're subtracting the two fractions. So we get the indeterminate form infinity over infinity. Again, the second objective for today's lesson is what do you do when you get either the indeterminate form infinity minus infinity or zero times infinity? And here's what we have to do. We have to rewrite our function in an algebraically equivalent form so that we will get either 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity and then apply L'Hopital's rule to solve it. So how do we rewrite this function? Well, observe that you have a difference or a subtraction of two fractions. How do you subtract two fractions? You need a common denominator. So to rewrite our function here that we're taking the limit of, we will subtract the two fractions by making sure that we have a common denominator. So we know that in algebra, if you multiply a quantity by a form of 1, you don't change the quantity because 1 is what we call the multiplicative identity. For example, 7 times 1 is still 7. 29 times 1 is still 29. So you can multiply any quantity by 1 without changing it because 1 is the multiplicative identity. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to multiply 1 over x by a form of 1, and we're also going to multiply 1 over e to the x minus 1 by a form of 1. And these are form, forms of 1, because if you divide a quantity by itself, you get 1. Uh, but why these particular forms of 1? So that we can get a common denominator and subtract the two fractions. So when you multiply the first uh, quantity, 1 over x, by this form of 1, in the denominator, you're going to get x times e to the x minus 1. And of course, when you multiply the second uh, quantity by this form of 1, in the denominator, you would get the same thing. That's our common denominator, and that's what we wanted. But what happens in the numerator? In the numerator for the first uh, product, we will have 1 times e to the x minus 1, and then you have this minus sign, and then for the second product, you'll have 1 times x, which is x. Okay, so now we have rewritten the function by subtracting the two fractions, right? So what are we going to do now? Well, we're going to try direct substitution again to see what we get. So when you substitute 0 for x, e to the 0 is 1, so you get 1 minus 1 minus x, and x is 0. So in the numerator, you get 0. In the denominator, you have x will be 0 times e to the 0 is 1 minus 1, so you get 0 over 0. That's an indeterminate form, but it's one of those two indeterminate forms for which you can use L'Hopital's rule. So that's our next step. We're going to use L'Hopital's rule. So we have to take the derivative of the function in the numerator and take the derivative of the function in the denominator. That's L'Hopital's rule. So the derivative of e to the x is itself. The derivative of a constant is 0, so you have minus 0. And the derivative of x is 1, so you have minus 1. And what about the denominator? How do we take the derivative? In the denominator, you have a product. So you have to use the product rule to take the derivative of the function in the denominator. The derivative of the first function times the second 
plus the first function times the derivative of the second. That's what we have. The derivative of the first function is 1 times the second function plus the first function times the derivative of the second function is e to the x minus the derivative of 1, which is 0. So that's what we have. So before we try direct substitution again, it's a good idea for you to go ahead and simplify what you have. Write it so that it looks uh, cleaner, neater, okay, more simplified. So e in the numerator, you'll just have e to the x minus 1. In the denominator, uh, what can we do in the denominator to simplify it? Well, when you multiply e to the x minus 1 by 1, you just get e to the x minus 1. Plus, you don't, when you distribute the x, then what do you get? You just get x times e to the x. So we've rewritten, we've simplified. The next step is for us to try direct substitution again. So substitute 0 for x, you get e to the x. e to the 0 is 1 minus 1. So in the numerator, you get 0. In the denominator, substitute 0 for x. e to the 0 is 1 minus 1 plus 0 times e to the x. So 0 times e to the 0 is what we have. And 0 times e to the 0, we know e to the 0 is 1. 0 times 1 is 0. So we just have 1 minus 1 plus 0 or 0. So that's how we get the indeterminate form 0 over 0. So what do you do? You just use L'Hopital's rule one more time because you get an indeterminate form for which L'Hopital's rule can be used. So we're going to use L'Hopital's rule one more time. Take the derivative of the function in the numerator. Take the derivative of the function in the denominator. So what do you get when you take the derivative of the function in the numerator? You get e to the x. And the derivative of 1 is 0. So you just have e to the x. What about when you take the derivative of the function in the denominator? Well, you get the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The derivative of, I'm looking over here now, the derivative of a constant is 0, so you just have 0. I didn't even write that. And the last thing that I need to do is to take the derivative of the last term in the denominator, which is a product. So how do you take the derivative of a product? You have to use the product rule. So we have the derivative of the first function times the second plus the first function times the derivative of the second function. Okay, so that's the product rule. And when we do that, we get the derivative of x is 1 times e to the x plus x times the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x. So we have applied L'Hopital's rule a second time. So again, we want to try direct substitution. But before we try direct substitution, maybe you want to simplify. Maybe you want to clean it up a little bit, make it look nicer. So it's easier for you to work with when you do direct substitution. So e to the x, look here, we're adding. So you have two like terms, and you need to combine them. So you have e to the x plus e to the x will give you 2 times e to the x. That's because we have a sum of two like terms. And then you have x times e to the x plus, there's the plus sign, carried over 2 e to the x plus x times e to the x. We've simplified, so now what do we do? We need to go ahead and try direct substitution again. So in the numerator, you get e to the 0, which is 1. In the denominator, you have 2 times e to the 0 plus 0 times e to the 0. So in the numerator, we had e to the 0, which is 1. In the denominator, uh, e to the 0 is 1, so you have 2 times 1 plus 0 times e to the 0 is 1. 0 times 1 is 0. So in the, num in the denominator, you get uh, just 2. So that's our answer. Our limit is 
one half, and that's our answer. So to summarize what we learned today, we learned, we reviewed our uh, seven different indeterminate forms, and we, uh, we looked at this example where we get the indeterminate form infinity minus infinity, or if you get zero times infinity, for one of those two indeterminate forms you have to rewrite your function until you get either zero over zero or infinity over infinity, so you could use L'Hopital's rule. And as a last note, yesterday we looked at problems where you get the indeterminate forms zero to the zero, one to the infinity, or infinity to the zero. For one of those three indeterminate forms, you use that special procedure that we talked about yesterday, where you assume the limit exists and is equal to y, and take the natural log of both sides of the equation and proceed from there.